Good day everyone. I am Sarah Boudon, Product Strategy Manager for Geostatica Reservoir Characterization in CGG Geo Software. Today I will share with you some thoughts on what to do with the hundred realizations you can easily generate with uh, Geostatica software products these days. For instance, with one of the two Geostatica inversion products CGG Geo Software offers, GeoSI in Hampton Russell and rock mod in the JSON workbench. Uncertainty is the key word here. We all know there is always uncertainty in any reservoir characterization product, because of course we'll never know everything about the subsurface. We also all know that a way to capture this uncertainty is to generate multiple models of the reservoir. So you are after an ID reservoir model, which is the repository for all the information you have about the reservoir, petrophysics, geophysics, geology, and production information. With this model, you will be making decisions for the development of the reservoir. So you want the model to be as accurate as possible, and you also want to know what you don't know. You are with your multipolarizations. Of course, you cannot go to the reservoir engineer with your 100 model. Uh, even if they are all plausible, you know you have to make some sort of selection. The question is then, what do you base your selection on? You will do some sort of ranking. I will discuss ranking and how to define a good ranking criterion in a few slides. Another question to ask yourself is, have I properly captured the uncertainty? I will show a multi-scenario approach to answer this question. With today's software capabilities and data storage capacities, you can easily generate 100 or more realizations. But this large number may not be exactly what you're after. So let's see how to be smart about this. Why geostatistical inversion? Because the geostatistical framework is designed to deal with uncertainty and to phrase the problem in probabilistic terms. Each source of information is modeled as a probability distribution function each with its own uncertainty envelope. Now let me illustrate this with a simple picture. Let's assume that this blue oval represents the solution space of the well information, that is, the range of possible reservoir models that can be estimated using the well information alone. And now let's assume that the gray oval represents the range of models predicted by the geology, the set of models which satisfies both sets of data is represented by the intersection of the two ovals, and it's a much smaller set of answers. The problem can be constrained even more if we add geostatistics, for example, knowledge about the prior proportion of faces, biograms to model the lateral correlation of the data, etc. And then seismic, of course, trend information, such as seismic velocities. So in the end, the integrated solution space is the set of answers which satisfies all the data simultaneously. And this is the relatively small area shown in orange. The posterior distribution function of the overlapping solution space is computed using Bayesian inference. In a nutshell, Bayes' rule allows to calculate the probability of an event in our case, a model of the reservoir, given prior information, here the data under the geological hypothesis. So one sample of this combined PDF is a model of the reservoir that is consistent with all the data and the hypothesis we used in the modeling. The second advantage is of geostatistical inversion is that by sampling multiple times the integrated solution space, you can generate multiple realizations and start getting an idea of the possible variations in your reservoir model. So I'm not going to dwell into details on how you sample the high dimensional and complex posterior distribution function. Uh, several methods are available and are implemented differently in various products. Whatever the methods, the question remains the same after you have generated multiple realizations. What do you do with these realizations? How can you look at them and make decisions? And if you want to select only one, which one? 
So first thing you can do is to look at the realizations individually and compute summary statistics. In this example, two uh, facies realizations are displayed. There are some features that appear the same in multiple realizations and some features that appear differently. So from all your realizations, you can compute the frequency of a given facies type. For example, here the frequency of that yellow uh, facies, which is the gas sand. In this example, the wells were not used as a constraint in, in the inversion. They are brine wells here. So you can, note, you can see that the match is really good between the actual well uh, values and the frequency of gas sand given by the multiple realizations of the geostatistical inversion. The match is good, that indicates that you can trust the results far away from the well. So this kind of summary statistics is particularly good for risking connectivity. With this type of analysis, you can say, I'm almost certain that the sand here in the lower part of the wells are connected. And also, I'm almost certain that the sand in the upper part of the wells are not connected. However, summary statistics are not appropriate to be delivered as a model of the reservoir. For that, you need to use a different approach. You need to make a selection, so you need to rank the realizations to order them and make a choice from that ordered set of realizations. The process is relatively straightforward. You define a ranking criterion. For each of the realizations, you calculate the ranking value and use these numbers to sort the realizations. So that is what is shown here. You have all your realizations, a certain ranking criterion, and the value is calculated for all the realizations, and you have the ranking of your realizations. Uh, P90, P50, P10 are uh, shown uh, with the color coding. You have the histogram of the uh, value of the ranking criterion and here you have the cumulated, cumulative probability for that ranking criterion and a QC map here on the, on the right. So this kind of ranking process can be used in two different uh, settings. For exploration objectives you can quantify the uncertainty to answer the questions like what is the expected volume of pay in the largest body and how precise is this expected value? So in that case, you can say the expected volume amounts to 1.26 and there is a 90% probability that this volume is lower than a certain value and there is a 10% probability that this volume is lower than a certain value. The same ranking can be used in production objectives to select the model. In that case, you are going to select the P50 as the best case scenario and you want a realization that exemplifies the worst case, that would be the P10, and a realization that exemplifies the best case, that would be the P90. Again, a very simple process. The critical part is to determine what to use as a ranking criterion. There are general rules about what makes a good ranking criterion. So first, it must be expressible mathematically. It's pretty obviously a must-have for quantitative ranking. Second, it must capture a local parameter of the reservoir characteristics, not a global measure of the output models. For instance, ranking is often based on the volume of pay, but it should not be the total volume of pay because this is actually one of your input parameters for geostatistical inversion. So if your input parameter was to have, let's say, 12% of pay, then all valid realizations should have value close to that input parameter value. So this global measure in no way captures the true picture of what you are probably more interested in, like the proportion of pay at a specific location. And this can be expressed as a business objective what will my well encounter, what will my well produce. That makes it pretty obvious that the ranking criteria depends on the objectives of the project, which means 
that it has to be defined as early as possible in the project. So ranking is a useful way to handle multiple organizations and digest what they are telling you. But you have to remember there is never a single model that is correct. And whether a model is better or worse, that is whether a model is P10 or P90, it really depends on how you make the judgment and how you define your ranking criterion. Let me illustrate this with an example showing the same set of organizations ranked using two different criteria. One criteria is the volume of pay within the largest body in the organization. And the other one is the volume of pay within 300 meters around a planned well. So with the JSON ranking tool, you can actually compute multiple ranking criteria and compare the ranking of the same realizations depending on the criteria. So if we zoom on this comparison, you will see that the P10, P50, and P90 realizations are not the same depending on the criteria. Remember, they are color coded with orange, green, and blue. The order is here from the right hand side from the volume of pay at the target well. And you can see that the P10 realization for this one is actually the P90 realization for the volume of pay in the largest body. Another reason you must define the ranking criterion early in the project is that the ranking is also useful to identify primary contributors to the overall, to the overall uncertainty. The reason ranking is very often done on, on pay is that the proportion of pay is usually one of the key parameters of one of the key uh, uncertainty parameters in uh, the geostatistical inversion. So let me illustrate this. If you remember that picture from the beginning of my talk, to assess uncertainty, you actually sample this integrated solution space multiple times. That's when you generate multiple realizations. And always comes the question, how many realizations do I need to properly sample the solution space? When you generate multiple realizations from the same model, that is in this example from the same overlapping area, you are assessing the uncertainty of the model, which is called the variance. So by including as much data from different sources as possible, you try to reduce the variance. But a much more important part of the uncertainty is the bias that comes from the uncertainty in the data itself. For instance, is the prior sum proportion 15 or 80 percent? You have derived this value from well data, which are most likely preferentially drilled. There may be a bias, so you need to test what happens with a different value. With that schematic illustration, that would mean moving the PDF representing the prior sub proportion in the solution space. Another example of bias could be how much do you trust your seismic data? Is the signal to noise ratio 15 or 10 dB? So this would mean increasing the size of the, of the PDF representing the seismic uncertainty. So you can go on like this it, and it is clear that changing the settings will change the overlapping area. Therefore, the sampling will generate new, still plausible realizations. So by varying the parameters of the model, you try to capture the bias component of the uncertainty. And the only way to get a realistic uncertainty quantification is to take into account both sources of uncertainty, not only the first one. The first one is what is traditionally done with your statistical method, generate a large number of realizations from the same settings. This is good, but this is not enough. So the proper approach is to use a multi-scenario, multi-realization approach. So you select the most sensitive parameters, for instance, the prior proportion for the facies. And obviously, the most sensitive parameter has an impact on the ranking criterion as well. So you define variations around the base scenario and you run a certain number of realizations for each variation. The base value plus 10%, the base value minus 10%. And then you combine them all in ranking. So RockMod includes tools to efficiently implement this approach. The scenario generation tool 
is here to quickly define a set of variations around your base scenario for key parameters. Multiple realizations for each scenario are multi-CPU enabled for performance, and the ranking tool allows combining realizations irrespective of their origin from multiple scenarios and or from multiple realizations of multiple scenarios. So this reservoir model you are after will be used to predict prediction results, production results years into the future. So you need to have confidence in the model. Therefore, you need to integrate as much data as you can, including the uncertainty. And the reservoir model will also be used to compare development scenarios. So you need to think ranking upfront and use a multi-scenario approach. I hope that my talk has given you some food for thought on how to be smart in how to best use the software tools and the computing power you have these days. I thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.